When I saw it, I couldn't see it well, a few seconds. And I saw that she was there naked, man. You know, I just, I just broke down and started crying. I and then I seen the guys in the room. Really? Really? Now, what's up, peeps? Welcome back to the Lionel B Show. It's your first time tuning into the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on the videos, man. Also, make sure y'all click that notification bell button so anytime I drop a brand new video, y'all be the first ones to get it. Now, peeps, today we have a special guest, man. He is a professor at John Jay in Manhattan. He's also a criminal defense attorney. He actually sits with a lot of these major news outlets and he's been giving his commentary on the Shanquilla Robinson's case. Now today guys, we're gonna be talking a lot about the case and also giving us some information as to why the case is moving along so slowly. So make sure y'all stay locked into this video, watch the whole entire video. Now, how do you feel about that particular case? Now you did uh, mention on CBS, I did uh, catch that segment that is basically, I think you said something about it's up to the Department of Justice at this point. Yeah, so an extradition proceeding is an executive branch function. It's not a function of the courts, right? It's a function of, obviously, the president and the subsidiaries of the executive branch, which includes the Department of Justice, which includes the U.S. attorney's offices and uh, the federal agencies, including the FBI and others. Um, and so the courts are involved in extradition, but it's really a function of the executive branch, ultimately the State Department and the Secretary of State. So does that have anything to do with, you know, as far as getting those arrest warrants and also even potentially like kind of covering up the names of who the arrest warrant is for actually? Well, so Mexico puts in the request, right? The request isn't put in here in the US, Mexico puts in the request. And the idea is that if a country has a treaty with the US, an extradition treaty, then that treaty must be abided by. Right. And the federal authorities here must do everything uh, in their power to extradite these people back to Mexico. And there's a procedure here in the states that begins with bail and goes on to a probable cause hearing, uh, a habeas corpus hearing, which is an appellate hearing. And ultimately, the approval, the ultimate approval by the secretary of state. So we are uh, really at the beginning stages of that process. So how long do you predict this to actually go out as far as? Um, securing the arrest warrants and also the extradition. Like, what type of time frame would you be looking at? Oh man, lawyers are never good at giving time frames, and I'm no okay. different, right? Um, mm -hmm. Not because uh, you know, just because you, you, you don't know, right? And when it comes to extradition, there are uh, preliminary arrests possible, right? Provisionary arrests, as they call them, uh, for emergency cases uh, in which the defendants may flee. And then there are the typical extradition proceedings. So if there is no risk of flight here, then it may take several months, if not more. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, uh, with your with your personal experience, and I mean, hearing you know the facts that are available uh, for that particular case, do you feel like there is a flight risk uh, with the Cabo Six? Uh, from what I understand, there is not a flight risk, and flight risk can mean really anything in the world, right? There are numerous factors that go into. Uh, what a flight risk is obviously means and obviously seriousness of the offense right here the conduct that they are accused of or at least um that the perception is that they are accused of is incredibly serious uh, from what i understand there is no risk of flight again from the facts that were kind of presented so far um which haven't been terribly many so based on from what you've seen um with your experience do you feel who do you feel like is kind of responsible or have you even kind of looked into that further? So that will be done in Mexico, right? Mexico right. requests the extradition and they will substantively try the case, right? The U.S. is involved only to the extent that the U.S. will do whatever it has to do to extradite these folks and they will fight that process and they will fight it at the probable cause stage right, to try to convince a federal judge and then ultimately the secretary of state that extradition would be unjustified. In terms of the substantive evidence in the case and the substantive facts of the case, that will come out in Mexico should we get there. I don't, I don't know if I, if I understood that. So you're basically saying the FBI is, uh, is going to fight the Mexico uh, for the extradition? No. There's a oh. treaty between Mexico and the U.S., all right? Mm. That treaty basically says that we recognize one another's criminal processes. And so if we seek to have somebody extradited, the U.S. should help us out, right? And the agency that typically does that in the U.S. is the FBI, right? The federal agency. 
And once the FBI does that, they will obviously investigate, right? And then ultimately the case will be turned over to the U.S. attorney, right, the federal prosecutors, who will seek extradition in the courts, right? Once that happens, assuming extradition is approved by the federal judges, uh, which it oftentimes is, the case will then ultimately, uh, at the end, go to the Secretary of State, and the Secretary of State will finally, right, ultimately uh, determine whether or not uh, this person must be extradited or these people must be extradited. Gotcha. So we're pretty much looking maybe mid, uh, mid-spring, mid mid-summer in order for them, you know, to at least get the extradition and them to be in Mexico and and, and possibly try it for their crimes. Well, you got to go through the bail hearing, then the probable cause extradition hearing. Uh, assuming that all goes south, you got to go to the habeas corpus hearing, which is the appellate process. And then assuming that all um, goes south for these folks, they would have to go then to the secretary of state, which is the executive branch. Right. So it would take several, several months at least. So how do you feel about the family? Because the family's been coming out uh, quite a bit on the news, indicating that um, they want justice, of course, for their daughter. And it's taken a, you know, quite a while. Do you feel like maybe that uh, they don't really understand the process is probably why they feel that way? Well, it's not that they don't understand it. Look, this is a devastating time. And, uh, you know, the family of of, of Shinquella Robinson has certainly, uh, you know, an interest in seeing how this all plays out. And the authorities, as any authorities in any case, should work with the victim's family. This is a high profile case, right? And this is a case where the FBI, which is a federal agency, and federal agencies really do things by the books and they do things in a structured and careful manner, want to make sure that they limit um, possible erroneous sources, possible leads that may go nowhere, right? They have to cross their T's, uh, dot their I's, do their homework. Um, so that when and if and when this gets to a federal court, uh, there will be no issues. And that's their focus. And the family may feel slighted and they are entitled to feel slighted. Um, you know, a, a federal authorities should certainly work with them. Uh, but the process is the process. All right. We definitely, uh, definitely appreciate your um, insight, man. We would love to, you know, for you to definitely be back on the channel as well and give us some more information. And also um, tell the viewers where they can actually find you if you have a YouTube channel or uh, any of your uh, services, because you're still practicing law, correct? As well I as being primarily practice law. Uh, okay. I awesome. primarily practice law. I represent folks in New York and New Jersey, sometimes other places every day in my life. Um, I teach at John Jay College of Criminal Justice here in Midtown. It's a terrific criminal justice college, um, which is how CBS found out about me and a lot of these other places do. Um, and my name, again, Dmitry Shaknovich. My website is www.dshacklaw.com. I have a YouTube channel, at dshacklaw. And I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram and all the other places where you find people these days. Um, and so I hope that none of your, of your viewers need me other than for commentary purposes. But if they do, that's where they find me. Yeah, guys. So if you need them, that means you're in some trouble. So hopefully you guys don't uh, need them. Definitely love your work. I did get a chance to watch um, you uh, on your video where you did it with about the Tupac and Biggie case. So I'm going to make sure I link that below as well, guys. Watch the video. It's very, very, very informative. I think a lot of information that was in that particular interview, a lot of people didn't know. I didn't even know, especially about the Biggie and the Tupac and the Hitman yep. and all this. I was just watching like, whoa. But um, yeah, I'm going to make sure I share that video um, for you as well, man, because it's definitely a compelling uh, interview and you guys need to watch that for sure. Appreciate it, my friend. Thank you. No problem, man. Thanks for coming on with me, bro. All right. Take care. All right.